appears at Freeman Heights. The Freeman Heights family, he does not need an introduction. For those who don't know him, I will attempt to present him. In my five years here at Freeman Heights, I've not found a young man that was more memorable, caring, a great athlete, a great student. And that's a tribute to his family who invested well into this young man. He has been just a model of what we expect of our young people today. And I thank God to be able to present to you Corbin Crane. Amen. He's going to come in before you, not as a student, not as an athlete, but a child of God Amen. who is a drum leader for Jesus, Glory. who's unashamed to tell the whole world that he loves the Lord. Amen. Right. Corbin, may God use you in your own special way. God bless you. I present to you Brother Corbin Crane. Good morning, brothers, sisters in Christ. Amen. Good morning. God is good. God is good. He is a good God. Amen. Thank you, Brother Mark. Today, I'm going to be talking about temptation and how do we overcome it. All right. Have, sometimes when I go over to my grandparents' house, I, we sit down on the couch and we watch TV. And we, all, we used to always watch this one show called uh, AFV or America's Funniest Home Videos. And we watch it with them all the time. And this one episode, they, they had like this challenge thing, this candy challenge where the parents would set a big bowl of candy on the middle of the table. And they would tell, they would tell their kids to sit down around the table and they would, they would go tell them that they're going into the back room or they're going to their room for a second and not to eat it until they get back. And... <laughs> We would, watch, we would watch this over and over again. We watched many kids fail. And many of them, most, most fail. And almost every kid would fail this challenge. And this is like a definite, kind of a example of temptation. The Oxford Dictionary defines the word temptation as the desire to do something, especially uh, something wrong or unwise. So basically this is saying the want to do something that we aren't supposed to do or something that that we're it's not like destined for like we're not the need is not for us to do that. The biblical definition though of temptation is located in James chapter 1 verse 13 through 14 and it says when tempted no one should say God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed. The scriptural and, dic and dictionary definition of temptation are both similar to each other and are on the same path leading towards talking about how temptation is us being dragged away by our own desires and what we want. Not only are we tempted, but Jesus was also tempted while he was in the wilderness. Matthew 4, through, chapter 4, 1 through 11 says, Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights before this, so he was already hungry. Satan came to him and saying, if, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus told him, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil then took him to a city to the highest point, questioning him again. Keep in mind that he keeps questioning him. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. Then Satan relating the scripture, using it against Jesus, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a single stone. Jesus then fired back using scripture of his own to back himself up. It is also written, don't put the Lord your God to the test. The devil lastly took him to a mountain, looking over all of the kingdoms of the world, saying, I will give you all of this if you bow down and worship me. So he's saying, I will give you 
all these kingdoms. He took them to the highest point, showed them every kingdom around the world and said, I will give you all this just if Jesus bowed down to Satan. Jesus then told him, told him, get away from me, Satan, for it is written, the, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. The devil left and the angels attended Jesus. Jesus was tempted three times. It did not fall into temptation once, not once, not even one time. He didn't even think about it. Amen. Jesus will never tempt us. It's not always the devil either. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it is, but it is never and will never be God. As James 1, 13, chapter 1, verse 13 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Just like in the wilderness, where Jesus never fell in temptation, he will never cause us to fall into it, and he will never drag us. Amen. As we go throughout our lives, surrounded by temptation and sin, we need to be on high alert and keep your eyes open. First, First Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be alert and, on, and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. It also says in 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. Sometimes I'm up, at, up, up late with my dad, and we're watching these documentaries. And one time we were watching this one, it was like called like the Predators of Africa or something like that. And, there was, and the lion was like over here in this section, and there was a group of gazelle over here. And they were grazing. And the lion was moving closer and closer, moving across the field, across the savanna. And he was closing, he was closing and sneaking up on them. The gazelle are like the gazelle are like us, are the followers of Christ, the are his his followers. And the lion is like the devil. The devil is coming in closer, closing in on us, bringing sin in sin and death with him, temptation, he's, he's closing in sneakily trying to get us to fall into his trap. So we need to stay alert and keep watch. Amen. How do we overcome this temptation though? First, we need to stay in the word and stay with God. Amen. John eight twelve says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life. John 1.1 1, 1 says, The Word was with God, and God is the Word. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the life. So we need to walk in Jesus. Amen. Jesus Amen. offers life to all who believe with the blood He shed on the cross. Yeah. If we walk in Jesus, we are, walking, we are in the light and we and are in the Word. In the wilderness, the only thing Jesus used to block temptation was Scripture. So use his word and use it right. The more you know his word, the more you overcome temptation. So stay in his word. Second, put yourself out of sin's path. Matthew 18, 8 through 9 says, If your hand or foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to stumble, Gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into the fire of hell. Like in the candy challenge on AFV, if those kids walked away from the table or they didn't look at the candy bowl, then they wouldn't have failed that challenge and they wouldn't have fallen for it. But instead, they were racing for the candy. And like us, we, we reach into sin and then because of our temptations and we reach in and pull back and pull back to God and we reach back in because it looks good but it looks good to us but in, but when we're with God it's it's just not really good and we reach in and we pull back and we keep reaching back in and pulling back St- we need to stop that continuous pattern of falling and getting back up and just put ourselves out of sin's way and into Jesus' arms Amen. let's say I have Two dogs. I have two dogs, and I'm making them fight. But don't don't do that. <laughs> but, <laughs> whichever dog I feed the most will win. I can either feed the good dog, which is our Holy Spirit and Jesus inside of us, or we can feed the bad dog, which is our flesh. 
Which one are you going to stay in? Which one are you going to feed? Third, stay in prayer. Matthew 26, 41 says, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In scripture, it even tells us how the flesh is weak and how the spirit, how the spirit, if we do right and trust the Lord, our spirit will be victorious. God is always listening to us pray. I'm doing a devotional right now called um, Finding God's Truth in the Storms of Life. And in, in the devotional a couple of days ago, it was talking about prayer. And it, told, it was telling me how if we pray according to his will, we know he will answer since he always has our best interests in mind. First John 5, 14 through 15 also says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we, we asked of him. Confidence in our prayer is key. The, and prayer is a major tool that we have in our spiritual toolbox. And we need to use this every day. Staying in his word. Stay. Keep praying. As I close this out today, I just want to say that as we live life, we need to watch our thoughts for our thoughts become words. We need to watch our words for they become our actions. We need to watch our actions for they become habits. We need to watch our habits for they become character. And we need to watch our character for it becomes our destiny. I also want you to remember that Satan has no power over us because we have been bought by the blood of Christ. Amen. We have victory over temptation because of the blood of the blood of the Lamb, our God, Jesus Christ. Yeah. My prayer for y'all today is that as you keep as, as you go out today, that you will feed the good dog, which is your spirit. Yeah. Keep filling it with the knowledge of God's word yeah. and his love. Lord, Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord. I pray that what I said today it doesn't just go in one ear and out the other, but finds a place in your mind. And in their minds out there, Lord, I pray also that you will tr that y'all will trust in the Lord with everything that you have. I pray that you can strengthen your relationship with Him and grow in His Word, Lord. I pray that I pray that they can love you and praise you, Lord. And and, and I pray that uh, as a near uh, as they were as we were singing, Lord, that uh, we are the branch and you are the vine, Lord. I pray that we abide in you, that we stay in your Word, Lord. I can say that we. We keep praying that we put ourselves out of sin's ways, that we move away. Lord, I pray that we just, just stay in your word, Lord. Word is key. Your, your word is key, Lord. I love you and praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.